Hi, I'm Paymon from the Technical Support Department here at Futech. Today, I'll be going over the USB calibration. This includes how to wire your sensor to your Futech USB device, also followed by the calibration of your sensor using the Senses software, either by the scale method or the system calibration feature. In order to perform the USB calibration, you'll be needing a Futech USB device, the USB connector kit, or a pre-assembled connection to your sensor. Keep in mind that if you have a pre-assembled connection, please skip the wiring part of this video. As an alternative to soldering, you can purchase a USB screw terminal board, which has a screw terminal block on one end and a pre-assembled USB connector to the other. You will find a wiring diagram of the USB connector on our Futech website. Notice on the wiring diagram that the front of the male high rows connector is labeled as even pins, and on the back of the male high rows connector is labeled as odd pins. For the connector, you'll need the following components. In our particular example, we're going to go ahead and cut off the shielding that's included on our sensor cable. To do this, I'm going to apply a little bit of solder at the base of the shielding so that when I clip it, I'm not left with any stray wires. Next, I'm going to take the bushing and slide it over the wires and onto the sensor's cable. I'm going to bring over my male high rows connector, but before I attach it to the male high rows connector, I'm going to cut off a little bit of my exposed wires to avoid any short circuits. On the back side of the male high rows connector, I'm going to take my green wire, which is the plus signal wire from my sensor, and attach it to pin 1 on the male high rows connector. Here, I'm going to try to solder the wire as close to the top of the pad as possible. Next, I'm going to take my red wire, which is my plus excitation wire, I'm going to solder it to pin 11 on the back of the high rows connector. I'm going to flip over the connector, and on the front side, I'm going to take my black minus excitation wire and attach it to pin 12. Lastly, I'm going to take my white wire, which is the minus signal wire, and attach it to pin 2 on the front of the high rows connector. I'm going to clean up some excess rosin with my rosin cleaner. I'm going to take the small metal cover. I'm going to go ahead and slide that over the top of my high rows connector. Next, I'm going to take the crimp. I'm going to attach it to the cable giving a little bit of space below from where the wires come out from my cable. And I'm going to go ahead and crimp that together. I'm going to go ahead and slide up the bushing so that it meets the crimping. Now I'm going to take the front cover and I'm going to put in the large metal connector and now I'm going to snap in the bushing and the crimp into the top cover. And I'm going to take my male high rows connector and fit it with the large metal connector. And last, I'm going to put the back cover on. And now I'm going to secure it with the provided screws. I'm going to push on a little bit, make sure it's snapped together. 
and we are ready to go. How can you easily decide which configuration is right for you? Just consider the following features of each configuration. The scale method will allow you to configure Sensei utilizing known information from your sensor's calibration certificate. On the other hand, a system calibration will allow you to perform a calibration using known loads. The scale method utilizes a two-point calibration, while the system calibration utilizes up to 16 data points for better sensor linearization. The scale method saves the calibration information locally on your computer. And the system calibration will save the calibration information internally in the USB device, making that USB device a plug-and-play system. Depending on your current situation, either can support you well in your application. In the Census software, click on the Calibration tab to enter into the Calibration options. In the Calibration section, choose the Calibration sub-tab to go into the System Calibration. Next, click the Settings button and enter the correct parameters into the Calibration Settings pop-up window. Enter in the serial number for the sensor calibrated to the USB device in the serial number window. This serial number will be stored in the USB device as a reference. Next, select your output units and enter the number of load points that you're going to use to calibrate your sensor. Also, it's important to note that the more loading points you have, the higher your accuracy will be. Now, check the multiple directions checkbox if the sensor is to be calibrated in multiple directions, such as tension and compression. Now, enter the maximum capacity for each direction in the corresponding capacity windows for the positive or negative outputs. Also, specify the direction of the load for the positive or negative direction output. Also, remember that no sign is needed to indicate polarity. For this video, I will be using a 10-pound tension and compression sensor. After the calibration settings pop-up window has been filled in, select Apply followed by OK. Continue with the calibration process by choosing step 2, which is Generate Test. A table will be generated to be filled in with the analog to digital readings for each loading point listed. The natural zero will be the zero output for the sensor without any fixtures. The zero loading point will be with any fixtures but no loads. Click on the first window under the ADC value to gain access to capturing the ADC values from the USB device. When in the window for ADC values, press the enter key on the computer keyboard to capture the ADC value and move on to the next loading point. Place the appropriate listed load onto the sensor and continue until all ADC fields in the table have been filled in with the captured ADC values for each loading point. I will now capture the natural zero point by pressing the enter key. Now I will add the picture and capture the zero. Remember that if you have a multi-directional sensor, do not forget to calibrate the ADC values for the negative direction. You can do that by clicking the calibration direction 2 sub-tab right here and doing the same process as you did for the last calibration direction 1. I will now take the values for calibration direction 2 as well. After completing and saving your recorded ADC values, click the number 3 step, save parameters, also the number 4 step, save calibration. Below you can see a shunt button. Shunt is used to stimulate a load on a load cell using an internal resistor within the USB instrument. Because there is no access to the shunt resistor in the USB instrument, the shunt value may result in a stimulated load over the sensor's capacity. Shunt can be used to evaluate the sensor over time. Shunt can also be used to verify the connection from the computer to the instrument and as well to the sensor. Remember, if you have made an error while calibrating or you would like to recalibrate your sensor with the same configurations, click the Recall Calibration button below. Also, if you would like to cancel your calibration, you can do so by pressing the Cancel Calibration button.
In the census software, you can access the scale method on the calibration tab below scale method. Click the settings button to configure the scale method properties. Select the appropriate serial number stored in the USB device to be used under the serial number menu drop down box. This serial number is the same serial number listed for the USB device upon sensit startup and displayed in the tracking mode screen. Next, fill in the remaining parameters. Full scale 1 is used to input the positive output of your new sensor in millivolt per volt and full scale 2 is used to input the negative output of your sensor also in millivolt per volt. Remember that no signs to indicate polarity are needed. If information for only one output direction is known, set both full scale 1 and 2 to the same value. More that for a USB device calibrated in millivolt per volt, the information for the full scale 1 fields will be in millivolt per volt. If the USB device has been calibrated to a sensor and contains existing calibration information for a specific sensor, the full scale fields will be the capacities of the existing calibrated sensor in relation to the new USB device's output. See the additional setup at the end of this video to relate a new sensor to an existing calibration stored in a USB device. Below, full scale 1 and 2, in parentheses capacity, are used to input the full capacity of the new sensor. Here, full scale 1 is used for the positive direction capacity and full scale 2 is used for the negative direction capacity. Again, no sign is needed to indicate polarity. Below, choose the output units that you are willing to use. After the parameters have been set, continue on the scale method steps and click on the set parameters button followed by the save parameters. Click on the Enable Scale Method button to now enable the entered parameters. You can also choose to disable the scale method to turn off the scale method feature. The scale method will store the parameters locally on the computer and will associate the information with the USB device's serial number. This means only one scale method can be active for a USB device at a time. A new scale method would need to be done for any additional sensors used with the USB device. Also, the existing information in the USB device remains intact. Here's the calibration certificate for your sensor. The important information you'll be needing for using the scale method calibration will be the full capacity of your sensor, also followed by the full capacity output rate in millivolts per volt of your sensor. For an example, we have a 70 pound 2.2 millivolt per volt calibration stored internally in our USB device. And now we would like to connect a new 10 pound 1 millivolt per volt sensor using the scale method feature. From the calibration certificate, we found at the sensor's full capacity, which is 10 pounds, the sensor actually outputs 0.9873 millivolts per volt. So why do we need this and how can we use it? Here is the internal calibration and the 10 pound sensor information. From the left, here is the internal calibration with red being the millivolt per volt scale and blue being the pound scale. From 0 to 2.2 millivolts per volt and 0 to 70 pounds. Here's our new sensor. As a fact, we know that the scale ranges from 0 to only 0.9873 millivolts per volt. But how can we find the pounds for the new sensor? Here's how to calculate the proportionality of the new sensor's output to the internally existing calibration information. If you get your new sensor's millivolt per volt output rate and divide it by your internally calibrated sensor's millivolt per volt output rate and multiply the outcome by 100%, you will get a percentage. As a fact, we know that at 0.9873 millivolts per volt, the new sensor, which is at full capacity, is only using 44.88% of the internal calibration line. So how can we use this percentage to find out how many pounds would that be? Here, keep in mind that 44.88% is actually 0.4488 in decimal format. If you multiply the internal calibrated sensor's capacity by the found percentage to get the corresponding amount that the new sensor's millivolt per volt level would result in. So 
our sensor is 70 pounds and we found out that our new sensor only uses 44.88% of that calibration line. So if you multiply these two by each other, we found out that 44.88% is only 31.42 pounds of the 70 pound sensor. The proportionality of the new sensor's output to the internally existing calibration information has been found. As you can see here, at 0.9873 millivolts per volt, which is 44.88% of the internal calibration line, is only using 31.42 pounds of the 70 pounds available. In conclusion, we use this 31.42 pounds to tell Sensit to display 10 pounds as a new full capacity for our sensor. So now that we know this information, we can go on ahead and fill in our scale method parameters. Here we found out at full scale 1, our sensor is only using 31.42 pounds of the 70 pound range. Since we did not have another way, the 31.42 pounds can go for the negative direction as well. As a fact from a calibration certificate, we know that our sensor only has a full capacity of 10 pounds. Since it does not have another direction, we will substitute the 10 pounds for the negative direction as well. Our output units found on the calibration certificate were actually pounds, so we will designate pounds in the output units as well. You can now use the scale method feature by pressing the enable scale method button. For more manuals and support about USB calibration and wiring, please proceed onto our website at www.futech.com forward slash support.